Hey, happy Saturday, you guys. Yeah, quick pandemic update. <laughs> the pandemic update. <laughs> well, like I said, I think people are following the shit. I don't think we have to update it. People yeah. can read news if they want to. Yeah. We're just kind of talking about, I don't know, there's not really much going on in our local area. Like I said, we haven't really been out for a couple of days, so I don't know, everybody, you know everybody how from, normal everything is. Everybody from the show sending me photographs of their local uh, grocery, grocery stores. Store. Yeah. <laughs> I don't really, you know, it's like... All I, that. It's funny because, like, you know, there's plenty of food, but they're just buying it up. They're panicking. Well, yeah, they're like panicking. I said, no one can eat that much. If you're not, if you're not in California or 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 New York or Chicago, I, I really wouldn't worry. I'm not even sure I'd really worry if I was. Maybe I'd worry if I was in California, but. But I mean, if you uh, if you already have food and supplies in your house, it would probably just do better to just stay where you were. Yeah. And then maybe later when you run out. Or right. when you start to run out, then maybe go back out. Don't just go be buying up stuff that like other people yeah. might need just because you think you might need it and you are. Yeah, they're, they're not letting people. They're not letting people buy more than two things of toilet paper. Well, they've been doing that for a long time five, because, like I said, <laughs> I even checked because I was curious. We didn't need any toilet paper, but I was yeah. curious after everybody was freaking out about it. So I went to like. A slightly less obvious website, which would be Staples, which if you're not from the United States is office supplies. And uh, they had big packs of like 48 rolls of toilet paper or something like that. And they still had some, yeah. uh, but they were also limiting it. And that was like a week ago. Yeah. So they've been doing that for a while. I think Sam's has been doing that uh, last time. When did we drive by Sam's? We didn't go in Sam's or we did, but only for a second. We were like, fuck this. Lots of booze instead. Yeah. But we went to the liquor store next to it. And yeah. um, it was a, a madhouse yeah. on a Monday or a Tuesday. I think yeah. it was. It was like. Yeah, the check out was big old long lines, and I was like, man, you know, they got an app. And we didn't yeah. need we didn't need a lot of things. I only yeah. needed like cat food and like yeah. one other thing. And I'm like, I can get that anywhere. I'm yeah. just I'm not dealing with this because I figured I'd be waiting in line for like hours and hours. Yeah, my so. neighbor, my neighbor, as I was walking to the to the uh, to the to the uh, mailbox to the mailbox, my neighbor was standing out there. He's out there in his lawn chair, and I says. So you ready for this? And he's like, no, man. And I said, I warned you. And he goes, yeah, you told me. And I said, yeah, I told you to go get your shit. <laughs> he doesn't have any shit. So now he's going to be over no, there. He's out there with his shit. wife. He goes, yeah, there's, there's no food in the grocery store. Yeah. And I had all those kids. And I said, I told you. He goes, <laughs> you ready? And he says, dude, I was ready weeks ago. Like he's I said, like, yeah, we always, me, we always says, have I, extra food. Yeah, and he, he, he's like, man, I should have listened. And I said, yeah. This, and I was thinking, don't go over here asking for food. <laughs> I mean, we've had, like I said, we have a whole pantry full of stuff. We have a freezer full of stuff. And we've always had that. It didn't really have Yeah, we always kind of had a good stock. Yeah. Just in case. Yeah. Yeah. But, it, you know, in a week or, in a week or so, once the panic's over, it's, it's just going to be normal. Like I said, it's, I don't yeah. think it'll be really that no. big a deal. So one thing, because, like, hey, if you guys have anything you want us to talk about or questions you want us to answer or something like that, you can totally do that. Um, you know, to give us ideas for these little daily shows that we're doing. So one yeah. person on YouTube, I think it was YouTube or Facebook, um, asked me to do uh, book recommendations because I guess now that you can see all my bookshelves back, and these aren't even all my books. I have like no, a bunch of my closet as well. Damn story. Oh too. yeah, and I have some up in the attic also. Yeah. Because I have so so many. Yeah, I had to get them shit. I had to get all that shit up there by myself, man. You were down there pushing on those big old boxes. I'll pull it. Well, yeah. Well, it wouldn't have been much good for me to go up there, too. Yeah. The attic's not really big enough for, like, yeah. two people to go up there. I was up there, there man. Punch. I felt like I was going to get attacked by that damn ghost that hung that dude up in the attic. Remember that one? <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> what shit? I that was, was that... Like that. I was expecting a damn rope to come down and get me. That was him. that, um, that was in San Pedro, California, wasn't it? I think it, it was, yeah. I think it might have been. Yeah, I think I wrote, I wrote about it in my book a while ago. That was back. the one they based the entity on. Uh, I think. Yeah, was it? I think pretty sure. No, I think that was two separate things. Was it? But it was that same investigator. Yeah, I think it was the same yeah. investigator. I mean, if I'm, I might be remembering it wrong, but I'm pretty sure that those were two separate yeah. incidents. <laughs> Maybe I don't, I don't know. Really I kind of thought it was the same woman. But. Yeah. No, I don't think it was. Right. But uh, yeah, so somebody asked me to do book recommendations, so I might do that. Like on some of these, I decided today I just kind of went around and plucked a few random books off of my shelves. Uh, I did like a classic one, like classic fiction. I did like a more modern fiction and I did a nonfiction because I have a lot of nonfiction, probably more than anything else. So the first one I'm going to recommend, if you have not read this, um, you should. This is a classic of gothic mystery literature. This is The Woman in White by Wilkie Collins. This book 
kicks ass. I was just so, so invested in this. I think I read it over one weekend and look how long it is because I was just like, it's kind of like, it starts out as like sort of a ghost story, but then goes in kind of like a crime mystery, like poisoning type of thing. Um, it does not surprise me in the least that this guy who was actually a contemporary of Charles Dickens and they were uh, friends, this book outsold Charles Dickens by quite a large margin, like when it came out. And I'm not surprised. I have to say I like this a lot better than most of the Dickens that I've read. <laughs> no, you know, it's like Dickens is okay, but I, I liked this much better. And there's also a book, I think it's by um, Robert Simmons called Drood, that is about, it's like a fictionalized supernatural account of Wilkie Collins and Charles Dickens like fighting like a supernatural monster. I kind of wish they would make a Netflix series out of that because I would watch the shit out of that. It would be fucking awesome. It's the same author that did uh, The Terror, you know, that was on Annie. Also, this is another fiction. I just found this book fucking randomly. I think it was in Barnes and Noble because I used to go to Barnes and Noble and like troll the, you know, the, the front part where they have like all those hardbacks and stuff that they're selling off for cheap, like once the paperback comes out. I had actually never heard of this guy, but this book is fucking amazing. It's called The Church of Dead Girls. And um, it's kind of like, it's like a murder mystery that takes place in like a small town in upstate New York. And it's like uh, this woman that's found with like no hand. And then like all these girls start turning it up, turning up. And then he's really good at like kind of ramping up the tension. You know what I mean? And like everybody starts getting paranoid about that somebody in the town is a killer. And like they start doing vigilante shit and like all this other kind of stuff. But it's really, really good. It's... um you know, the suspense just builds up and builds up. I actually liked this so much that I bought another one of his books called Boy in the Water, which is also excellent. Uh, I need to read more. Of, I read more of his stuff because he's written a shit ton of novels and poems and stuff too. I think he's slightly better known as a poet, but he's written a lot of novels as well. And this is my nonfiction. And I love the shit out of this book. And I wish somebody would make a movie out of this shit because I would watch the shit out of that also. This is called Strapless. And this is a biography of the woman who posed for the very famous John Singer Sargent uh, po uh, portrait called Madame X, which I've actually seen uh, in New York, and it's amazing. Um, but this woman's life is just, it's so fascinating to me. She was just like, she's from uh, New Orleans. She was a Creole. And um, she was kind of like, <laughs> I want to say like one of the Kardashians of her time, you know what I mean? Cause she wasn't, she just was kind of like a society girl who was really known well for, she had this like super, super pale skin and she had this like really um, striking uh, look and like the way she dressed and everything like that. So she was like kind of high up in society and she was also um, kind of a snot a little bit. And she was in some other, so like some other artists painted her too, just because she was super famous. And it's funny because this portrait ruined her life, huh. which is very funny because <laughs> you wouldn't think about it now because it's so, but the little strap, the reason this book is called Strapless is because the little strap that's off of the dress, that was a huge fucking deal when this portrait was first uh, displayed like to the public, everybody flipped the fuck out because they thought, oh, well, that's like when the strap comes off, like, like she's just had sex and put the dress back yeah. on or she was getting ready to take it off. So it was like this humongous scandal and she had to like basically go into hiding and it's like she, she flipped out so much that she like had to get rid of all the mirrors. She wouldn't look at herself anymore and like Damn. all this other kind of stuff. So it's like, there's exactly some what people gave a fuck. Yeah. So there's yeah. like some fictional novels. Cause I've read a couple of those yeah. kind of about it, but um, this is like the, you know, the nonfiction like biography of her and it's really, really good. And like I said, I wish somebody would make it into a movie because I think it would be really awesome. She's just like a fascinating, she's not a likable person, but um, she's a really interesting person. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I guess aside from that, we're uh, watching the Elvis movie. Yes, Dominic sent us that yeah. uh, John Carpenter yeah, John Elvis Carpenter's movie. Yeah, Elvis movies. That came out, what, 1977, 78? It was between... Like I looked it up earlier was, because I was no, curious. It, it, was it was after Halloween, but before The Fog. So okay. Halloween okay. was 78, so it's, so it's like 79. Okay, 79. 80. Something like, when did The Fog come out? 79 or 80? Some, so it was somewhere some. in there. Right. And, and it's funny because um, I think Rob sent me a link 
And he's like, uh, some website somewhere had like ranked every John Carpenter movie, like from what, from best to worst or whatever. And some of the movies in there, I had forgotten that he had directed them. Yeah. It doesn't feel like a Carpenter movie. It's very straight laced. It's very, it's almost kind of like a documentary in a way. It's, uh. Yeah. It's, no, it's it, like no frills. And that's, yeah, that's not like a, a criticism yeah, and it's at long. all. It's like three and a half, almost four hours long. Yeah. I didn't realize it was and, like Salem's lot length. Yeah. And it's good though. Uh, it, it's and it's accurate. It's very accurate based on everything that I've read and heard about uh, the king. I call him the king. <laughs> having this, having a heritage, you know, from Mississippi. You having know. lived in Mississippi, you yeah. kind of have to. Well, you, yeah, it's you know the what law. I mean? you if have you're to rooted refer to in Mississippi, you know, you have to you have to understand that Elvis is a deity. He's like yeah. a religious deity. You know, he's up there with Jesus, and not all, not exactly there, but it's. <laughs> It's almost kind of like John the Baptist. He's like one notch full. Yeah, like Jesus. John the Baptist. <laughs> you know, and, and it's three different incarnations. You know what I mean? Because he returned as Orion That's and right. Billy Idol. Sure. Or Glenn Billy Danzig, was a, if you want to go, if you want to go a little there out there. There were sequels to Elvis, yeah. <laughs> Elvis 2, Electric Elvis Boogie. Two. Yeah. But yeah, I'm, I'm really liking it. We actually, I didn't realize because I should have because it was made for TV, but it was a TV miniseries. So I'm assuming it aired like over two or three nights, like I said, like Salem's Lot did. So we just started watching it. We're watching it. And then like we paused it like to go to the bathroom or something like that. I'm like, holy crap, this still has like two hours yeah. left. And we've like, I think it's like four hours long. What I liked about it is that it, re- it reminded me and kind of put into the, into a context of how retro Elvis was. He was retro even back in, when he was in young. the day. Yeah. In the day, he was retro. I mean, he took his parents with him wherever he went. <laughs> yeah, you know true. I mean? You know, he buys a brand new mansion. He puts mom and dad and grandma up at Graceland with him, living in there. Today, Weird. today, a celebrity <laughs> wouldn't do that. You yeah, know, I'd be stuff. like, yeah, you buy you buy a house and you like buy a separate house for them. Yeah, you you, know you guys go live over there and don't visit there. me. Not Elvis. <laughs> Elvis. Elvis had Elvis was very family oriented. He had to be in his mama's face all the time. Yeah, Shelley Winters plays his yeah. mom in this. He was kind of a mom's boy. A little bit, but, and they do show yeah. that in this, and it's a little bit weird, but not in a not in a creepy way. It's just more kind of like he's I don't like, know. He's it's, like he was like a Victorian or somebody from another country. Yeah, it was kind of heartwarming, but also yeah. from a modern perspective, it's kind of weird. Yeah. But I actually I think Kurt Russell makes a really good Elvis. He's not doing the singing in this one because right. uh, we looked that up. Somebody else does it. It sounds just like Elvis. It really does. It sounds a lot yeah. like him. But um, there, there are a couple scenes where Russell kind of lays it on a little thick, where it's where it's an Elvis impersonation. Like a little bit like a character. He says mumble too much. Too, too, he says mumble too, too many times in a damn sentence. In, <laughs> in, in, in a sentence. And it's just. But it is kind of, you know, it, 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 he did a really good job. He looks a lot like Elvis, man. I never he realized looked, until they yeah. get until they gave him like the pompadour hair and like even yeah. like especially like his profile and stuff like that when he was real young like that. Yeah, but he was in the army. Yeah, I was like, yeah. holy crap, he does really look a lot like Elvis yeah. now that I'm thinking about it. You know, it's funny, it's like we were watching the movie. This happens to us all the time because we're getting old and it'll happen to you youngsters too. But we'll be watching a movie and we'll see like an actor in there and we'll be like, God damn it, we just saw them in something. It's like, remember what I was talking about in Satanic Panic? Like yeah. the girl that played Judy, it was bugging me the whole time because I'm like, I just saw her in a fucking movie. Yeah, what was it? And that? I had to look it up and it was Happy Death Day. Yeah, well, one of, one of Elvis's old girlfriends from Memphis that he never really sees again once he leaves. Remember? Yeah, Bonnie, I think Bonnie, her name, but the yeah. character's name is. Turns out Bonnie played Dale Arden and Flash Gordon. Yeah, we're because like, the whole time, time we're like, yeah. who the fuck is that? I was yeah. like, we just, I know I've seen her. Like I said, I've seen her in a movie yeah. that I've seen a bunch of times. I was thinking, for some reason, I was thinking uh, 80s slasher movie, because I've been yeah. watching a lot of those recently. I'm like, maybe she was in Prom Night, or... Yeah. No, I said, not Prom Night, but something like that. And then finally, I told him, I was like, pause the movie, look it up on IMDb, because this yeah. is going to drive me crazy for the rest of the movie. Another thing I liked about the movie is that they left the paranormal elements to, 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 uh, to Elvis Presley in there. And there is some paranormal shit with, with Elvis. Elvis could swore that his mother knew exactly what he was doing no matter where he was. And they did, like, bring that up in the movie, which I thought was kind of cool. Gave him a little bit of a mystical. His mom would call him, you know, and says, you know, I dreamt there was a fire and that the women were ripping your clothes off. And he goes, yeah, they did have mom. Yeah, like their car, his car overheated. Yeah, there's, there's all, you know, and then another another one that was kind of paranormal is that, you know, his twin died. Yeah. I think at birth, wasn't it? Or just right after birth? Yeah, when he was a baby. So he... He evidently talked to this ghostly twin. Jesse. Yeah, Jesse. And he felt that Jesse was with him and he kinda and his mom believed that that 
basically his mom believed that Elvis had two souls in him. Yeah. Or the power of two souls. So there's just some weird shit, you know. It, it's it's like some stuff that would happen. Now that must be Amazon. Yeah. Which pause ring it. Yeah. Okay. That was a, a Amazon delivery. But yeah, I like the fact that they left uh, kind of some of the paranormal stories associated with Elvis. I mean, you know, growing up in Mississippi for the summers, I'd run into kids, you know, like I think I told this story before. Yeah, yeah. They yeah. actually thought he could cause it to rain. Yeah. And cause that's what their parents told them. I just thought, and I think I mentioned this when we were talking about it before, I thought that's such a weird, like, a weirdly specific superpower. Like, yeah. to impute to Elvis. You would think that... I don't know. I like. I don't know if Elvis had a superpower. What would it be like that had something to do with his Elvisness? I well, wouldn't. Making I it know. rain would not be the first well, thing that would occur to me. I'm like, not sure what would occur to me. Later on, as his career started to kind of wind down, you know, he started to sing gospel. Yeah. So that kind of so a religious element got cast over Elvis. Yeah. In the in the deep south. Yeah. You know, so I think it kind of merged. He became mythical. Oh, yeah. And then definitely. once he died, you know what I mean? They thought that maybe he would come back where he wasn't dead. And then you had Elvis impersonators who were really good releasing albums, you know. And Orion was like one of the best ones. You guys can go on YouTube and look up Orion, you know, Elvis impersonator. And he sounds just like Elvis. I mean, just like it. Yeah. He wore a mask so you couldn't creepy. tell it wasn't He wore a mask so you couldn't tell it wasn't Elvis, but people were holding out that maybe it was Elvis. Yeah. And that's an interesting story. It's a, and yeah, there's a documentary about it. I don't know if you can still get it anymore. I don't even remember where we saw it because um, yeah. that was a while back. But yeah, it's it's really good. We've kind of think we've yeah. talked about Orion before, but yeah. Yeah, and the, and the the albums kind of had resurrection themes and occult themes on them. Yeah. Because to try to get to try try to insinuate to people that he had risen from the grave. Yeah. Which that's some fair that's some weird shit when you think about it. I do kind of feel like That's in a thousand weird, years, Elvis yeah. will have a whole like religion, like a religion around him. him. Probably right. people were going to see him, and they were kind of wanting to believe that yeah that he had risen. Wouldn't from that the be grave. funny? Now yeah. I want now I want a time machine just like yeah, and that shit worked in Mississippi. Yeah, and then later, once he soon as he took took the mask off and, and and told everybody who he really was, his career was over. And then he bought a pawn shop and got killed in a pawn shop. And got shot in a fucking robbery. Got shot in a robbery during a pawn shop. They came in and robbed his pawn shop. Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't a happy story. I no, no, say. no. But he was a great singer. He I was, forgot his actually. name, though. I just call him Orion. Yeah, that's yeah. what everybody called him. Orion, yeah. Um, yeah, I was, I probably I'll think of it in a minute. But yeah, um, if you guys, because everybody, mm. I think everybody that knows me knows, like I'm a big uh, Nick Cave fan. And uh, he had a song called Tupelo, which is on his album The Firstborn is Dead, which is also a reference to Elvis's twin brother. Yeah. And the whole theme of the song Tupelo is like about uh, Elvis's twin brother dying, Elvis taking upon himself the both good and evil aspects, like the twin soul thing, like his mom was yeah. talking about. And it also makes like a Jesus mythology out of him also. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so that so it's very prevalent. So prevalent that like, you know, yeah. Nick Cave, who was Australian, in case you didn't know, Tupelo isn't very far from where my dad was born and where yeah. I was going for the summers, but there's nothing there. There's nothing in, in Tupelo. Yeah. I don't think there was anything in Tupelo during the time when Elvis was I there. I had a friend that lived there in the 70s or 80s, but they moved away yeah, like, when it, she was pretty young. It's like little farmhouse type things. It, the yeah. downtown area is very small. Yeah, it's only downtown in yeah, the it, sense of... Our, our, <laughs> our little enclosed community here... Dwarfs downtown. It's bigger than downtown Tupelo. Tupelo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember it mostly just being a square. Yeah. S roads in a square with in a park in the middle and just like two Some, big like, dollar stores and, and shit yeah. around. Yeah, it's like a dollar store. Yeah, I've been you to know. towns like that. Yeah, there's dollar store. There's a lot of towns like that. Like a little south. hardware store. In the and, southwest, too. Yeah, and there might be like a Piggly Wiggly grocery store yeah yeah it's, it's, that yeah, it's like where does, i had that i have that piggly wiggly yeah. bag down in my desk some people don't believe that that exists that's that's a reality i didn't know they were still around but yeah around? i got a i got a bag from it yeah. i'm gonna have to take and now next time we go to the grocery store i'm gonna take my piggly wiggly bag yeah i keep forgetting but that I was the last time it. i saw it you know if anybody's from tupelo i'm sure you, you well you can look at it on google earth now but yeah the, from last time i saw it you know i was that was even before i was in the army yeah, so that was a so long, I, time, a long ago. time ago, so I don't know what it's like now. But 
there was yeah, nothing I there. I, heard I don't remember anything being there. Maybe there's more to it, and I didn't get to, didn't get to see it. Yeah. But I pretty much I'm pretty sure that I drove right down through the middle of the downtown. My dad, I think, drove me through there. It might only be famous nowadays there. because that's where Elvis is from. Yeah, there's probably a statue in there, but I don't really remember it. Probably shrines. There's got to be. Yeah. I mean, I would be very surprised if there wasn't. It was real slow and sleepy when I went through it. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, so if you haven't seen it, like John Carpenter... It's a good movie. ...made a TV movie. Haven't like a TV miniseries. We haven't seen that final one-third of it. We got... We yeah, got, we, we so had, we just watched like the first... I think we watched the first long. two hours, and right. I think there's like an hour, an hour and a half left. Right. Or something like that. It's yeah, pretty it's, long. It's when he tries to reboot his career after his mama died. After his mama died. Yeah. And his mama cried. And his mama cried. <laughs> In the ghetto. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're so silly. All right. <laughs> you want to knock off for the Saturday? Because yes, uh, we got some other shit we, we got to do. We got to do the show later and on. And we're going to, yeah, actually later on tonight, we're going to make some cocktails and yeah. do the show. Set the studio up. Do the show. Yeah. Well, actually, you have to like hang my cool mirror and stuff like that in that gap back there. Yeah. We'll have to hang that up so it'll be in the background that'd be kind of neat all right so we'll talk to you guys again later